Over before the national anthem, Joel Embiid and the Sixers taking on the Nets, looking to eliminate them in Game Five. Embiid spotted by TMZ Monday. Joel, is the series over? Is it over? Three one? Is it over? Over. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. I appreciate you, Joel. Nice bus. So let's see how Embiid played to back up his uh, his guarantee, his prediction. Ben Simmons drives, finds the cutting Embiid for the baseline. The Huge slam there. Sixers had a 10 0 lead. Oh, it, there would be more. And Bede working on Jared Allen. Hits the tough jumper over Jared Dudley. And Bede would score 10 of the first 14 points by the Sixers. Philly led 23 to 3. He said 23 to 3. Simmons, the drive, hits the floater. Nets trailed by as many as 24 in the first. Their largest first quarter deficit this season. I hope so. 76 led by 17 when the first quarter ended. Their largest playoff lead after a first quarter since 2001. More of the same in the second. Philly stayed hot. Embiid the spin on the baseline and the throwdown. And Embiid would get called for the technical foul. So he points at Hollis Jefferson after he dunked. And then J.R. Redick to Embiid. And the straightaway three. It's all going together. It's all for Philadelphia. 29 point lead at the break and beat at 15 at the half. Here's Embiid cutting to the basket, gets the pass from Simmons and the foul. Embiid finished with 23 points, 13 rebounds. It's a 22 point win by the Sixers to eliminate the Nets, and it wasn't nearly that close. Magic Raptors, those are the best kinds. Orlando basketball on the verge of extinction for this postseason, down 3 1. There's Kawhi, we the North. Swing pass over to Pascal Siakam. Misses, but Leonard right there with the putback. He's sneaky that way in the foul. Raptors go up 11 after the free throw. Uh, they're up 16 here in the first. As you see, Orlando stuck on three. Kyle Lowry. Eventually, we're going to get it back to him off balance, but that. So both the Raptors and the 76ers essentially ended their games in the first eight minutes. Look at that. The Raptors started 22 to three. He's mentioned the Sixers 25 to three. Um, they didn't shoot well, the opposition. And then they just got to play it out from here. Don't anybody get hurt. Look at Fred Van Vliet from 30. Come on now. That's Wee Chocker pride. Raptors led by 14. It just vacillated between, you know, 14 and infinity. Norman Powell. The one hand flush he gets all up in there Raptors 19 assists on 23 made field goals in the first half that's their highest assist total in the last 20 seconds and yes that was the obligatory Drake cutaway in the third Leonard big hands catches it lays it in he had 27 and 7 Siakam 24 and 6 Raptors in a walk 115 96 let's talk next what type of challenges can the Sixers uh, present to you guys uh, on either end of the floor? I'll let Pascal answer because I'm going <laughs> to enjoy this win tonight and not worry about the Sixers. <laughs> um, I mean, we, we all know, you know, they have Joel, you know, J uh, Jimmy Butler, um, uh, obviously Simmons and uh, JJ. You know, I mean, they have a bunch of Harris. I don't know. I can name them all, but um, I think you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge, and and you know, like like Kawhi said, uh, trying to enjoy this win tonight, um, probably get some rest, and then kind of dive into uh, Philly and, and kind of like worry about that. Then it's going to be an incredibly tough series. I I think that you know Toronto is as good as there is in the NBA, and uh, we will be tested immediately um, when we get up into uh, into Toronto. Like Brett Brown's trying to look like Butchie these days. Uh, Jurassic statistics: the Raptors 76ers. That should be excellent. Toronto took three or four games in the regular season, but all the meetings were before some trade deadline and roster shuffling. No Tobias Harris, no uh, Marcus All, that sort of thing. 76ers won the only previous playoff matchup between the two, but that was way back in 2001 in the conference semis. Moving on, I think Drake and Justin Bieber were both in Boston rooting for the, uh, the Maple Leafs there, and they're big Toronto fans, as you know, and they'll probably beat all those Raptor games whether the Raptor fans want them there or not. Raptors and Sixers, matchup right now. You need $220 bet on Toronto to win 100 bucks. Raptors won three of the four regular season meetings. That was their last meeting before the trade deadline, before they added Marcus Gasol, and Philly added Tobias Harris. 
Here's what you need to know going into the matchup. Kawhi played in three of the four games. Toronto won each one he played in. The other one was probably one of those load management deals. When he was on the court, they outscored Philly by 15. He did, did work, too, averaging over 30 points per game himself. Even with the missed time, Kawhi defended Ben Simmons more than any other player in the regular season, and it worked. Simmons went just 7 for 15 when he was checked by Kawhi, included nine turnovers. When he was guarded by all other players, he was 20 for 28. And the Raptors might have an answer for Joel Embiid with Marc Gasol. They met twice this year when Gasol was still with the Grizz. Embiid went just 6 for 18 when he was matched up against him. That percentage tied for Embiid's <laughs> worst against any defender this season. Something to watch for. Eastern Conference degree of difficulty in the first round of the playoffs, zero. Stephen A. Smith promised me something better here in the Eastern semis. We'll start with Philly. If they do what, they will beat Toronto. Well, first of all, I have good news for you. There's no, nothing to worry about in terms of it being better because it can't get any worse than what you saw this evening. It was an annihilation that took place at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. The Brooklyn Nets never showed up. Uh, they were down like 25 to 3 within the first few minutes of the game. It was a wrap. Clearly, that's not something that's going to happen against the Toronto Raptors. The Toronto Raptors are the number two seed in the Eastern Conference for a reason. They have length. They have athleticism. They have perimeter shooting. They defend. They have who I believe to be is the most improved player in the game in Pascal Siakam. They have a guy in Kawhi Leonard that is a superstar and a champion. So you know what they bring to the table. And they're going up against a bunch of young Lions in the Philadelphia 76ers with four of their starting five considered stars in this game. At least one of them tinkering towards superstar status if he's not already there in Joel Embiid. A guy in Ben Simmons who we'd be calling the second coming of LeBron James if he had a jump shot, but he's that lethal. You can expect a very, very thrilling series to go at least six games with a lot of competitive basketball. Toronto legitimately should be the favorite, but we'll see what happens. All right, let me float this one at you then. Uh, does the winner here matter, or is the Eastern Conference champ going to come out of the Milwaukee-Boston series? It could come out of the Milwaukee-Boston series. I've been somebody that's been sold on Boston despite what I've been seeing. I've got extreme trepidation now because I'm watching the Milwaukee Bucks be elite defensively. Offensively, you know what the Greek freak brings to the table. And then on top of it all, they're hitting perimeter shots. They launch more threes than anybody in basketball. The one game that Boston beat them this year Milwaukee outscored Boston by 40 points in the paint. But Boston won that one game against Milwaukee because they hit 24 three-pointers. Now when you look at Boston in this series, you're looking at Kawhi, uh, Kyrie Irving shooting better than 40% from three-point range. Tatum better than 50% from three-point range. Jalen Brown better than 40% from three-point range. All of this in the first round series against Indiana. You're looking at Boston and saying, okay, you're young. You've got some thoroughbreds. You've got a closer in Kyrie Irving. Are you going to hit perimeter shots to keep you in the contest so it could come down to the last mm -hmm. three minutes of the game where it's the Greek freak against Kyrie Irving? Who am I going to give the ball to to take me to the promised land? If Boston could do that, they could win the series. Here's the problem. It's the only way <laughs> they can win this series, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Stephen A. Smith, uh, first take every morning because you guys need it. Thanks, Stephen A. My man, thank you. Highlight's not gonna live, so we can just we can just freestyle it right now. Damian Lillard, he was in my closet. Paul George was in Stan's closet. No, it was the other way around. Hold on. Lillard, thick sky. First quarter, Oklahoma City shot 70%, but Lillard would not be denied. He had 19 in the first quarter. Still, Oklahoma City was up eight as George went for 15 in the first quarter. Russell Westbrook had seven, four assists three rebounds, and one turnover. Lillard. The Lillard King <laughs> had 34 points at half. He was 12 of 18 from the field, 6 of 9 from 3. Billy Ray Bates, where are you? Lillard was unconscious. Oh, it's a good highlight if you got a shot chart coming. 6 of 9 from 3, 12 of 18. He had 34 points. Still, Portland was up one. Paul George had 20 in the first half. Westbrook had 12. He was 5 of 15. More Lillard. Dame Dollar makes you want to holler. Look at the fellas over there. 
Portland up three. Step back, Bobby Jack, Paul George doing what they brought him to Oklahoma City to do and why he stayed around. Russell Westbrook, Portland dared him to shoot. Shoot he did. Would it be enough? Spin cycle, something like that. Fourth quarter, Oklahoma City was up two going into the fourth. Lillard getting a break. And that's a break for Oklahoma City if he's not on the court. Westbrook hits it. Oklahoma City's up five with nine minutes to go. Schroeder, long distance. And it looks like it's not going to be Portland's night despite being a four-point favorite. Schroeder again, 15-point game. This is where the fellow to the left of me called ball game Oklahoma City. Lillard, baller. Place is going mad, man. Where's Bill Shonley? Paul George. Westbrook, same spot as before. Portland let him shoot it, and Westbrook hit it. One minute left, Oklahoma City up two. C.J. McCollum ties it up with under a minute to go. And then Lillard to the hole with Soul. And he ties it with 30 seconds. Final second, Rip City, baby. Damian Lillard. From what? How many feet was that? Wow, what a game in the City of Roses. Damian Lillard, 50 at post game. Wow, that was unreal, man. Damian Lillard, 50, 50 points, 17 of 33, 10 of 18 from three. Remember, Portland was swept in each of its last two playoff series, Warriors and Pelicans. Lillard was awful against the Pelicans last season. Vastly better these playoffs, worked on his game. All his measures are up and Portland is on, and Oklahoma City is out. George Sedano joining us here on Sports Center. Man, what a game. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Hey, I'm still catching my breath. Yeah, and, and, and what a finish. Uh, let's talk about that last shot. I mean, Lillard, you could see he was sizing it up from the moment he crossed half court. Oh, there's no question about it. He knew exactly what he was going to do. Think about it. He's pulled the trigger from a lot of different spots yeah. this season and way beyond that three-point line. That right. one had to be close to 40 feet. I saw somewhere on Twitter right now they said 37, 38. He knew exactly how far he could shoot that thing because he had Paul George, one of the best defenders in the league, right in his eye. And here's the thing. You would think that's a once-in-a-lifetime shot. No, not for Damian Lillard. That's a twice-in-a-lifetime shot because, right. remember, he ended – the rocket season five years ago on a shot just like that. Yeah, and we've seen him shoot that shot in this series. Uh, I mean, he shooting 46% from the, from the floor in this series and just about the same from three. Yep. 26 of 54 from three-point range. You know, I, I shot a commercial with him last year. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, it was interesting to hear, as great a player as he is, I could tell he's still playing for respect. Oh, no doubt about it. And you're playing in the Western Conference with, with Steph Curry mm -hmm. and with Russell Westbrook. Maybe he, he doesn't get his due as uh, among point guards in the Western Conference. What, what did this kind of, of performance so far in the playoffs do for him? Oh, I don't think there's any question he's a top eight player in the NBA right now. I think he may be the second best point guard in the league behind Steph Curry at this yeah. point. And that's no disrespect to anyone, but what he's been able to put together on offense and even defensively, that's not something he gets a lot of credit for, but he grinded in this series on that side of the ball. So he needs to get a ton of credit for that. Man, what he's been doing is incredible. He has single-handedly beat them tonight. Yeah. And over on the other side now, we're, we're 11 seasons in with uh, Russell Westbrook, mm -hmm. and he seems to be getting further away from the finals than he was earlier in his yep. career. Where's that situation right now in Oklahoma City? They brought in Paul George to give him another superstar to play with. Where's that right now? I think there's some challenges there with that roster construction. If you look at the roster construction, there's just not enough shooting. Now, tonight, they actually shot the ball pretty well from out there, 44%. But if you look at it from a totality standpoint, just what they did during the regular season, they were in the bottom third there. They were the worst three-point shooting team in the playoffs to this point uh, prior to this game. So that, to me, is the biggest issue. It's the guys around those two. You've got to create space, particularly with Russ, because he's not an efficient three-point shooter. But again, he also needs to do a better job Again, not tonight, but just in general of taking smarter shots. All right, now uh, back to the Blazers. When, when Nurkic got hurt, we were like, ah, oh, man, might have ruined their, their, their next best chance to really make some noise in the West. But now seeing this performance and the way they put it together without him, how dangerous are they? 
Look, I, I think that they're on the right side of the bracket, right? They've got a yeah. Denver team right now who's up on San Antonio, who's inexperienced at this point. They've been through the heartache. You and I remember yep. it used to be in the NBA that you had to go through some heartache and some pain yep. before you to got to there. the mountaintop. Right, right. And Portland has certainly suffered a ton. So I think that they're on the right side of the bracket in that regard because they're facing potentially an inexperienced Denver team or a San Antonio team that's just not they as good overmatched. as we've right. become be over accustomed to. Right, right. right. So they could absolutely be in the Western Conference Finals, and maybe our guy Charles Barkley, who picked them to win the yep. Western Conference, may be on to something. <laughs> that was before Nurkic, though. That was before, that was before No, he doubled down on Get Up. Doubled, okay, all right, he okay, did. all right, all right. We'll see, we'll see. Hey, George, good to have you here, man. Always a pleasure. Right. And oh, what a game for you to see. Good Lord. <laughs> I was running around the studio. It was crazy. <laughs> Murder by numbers, one, two, three. The Thunder dropped their 12th straight road playoff game, falling to 0-9 since Kevin Durant left for the West Coast. That's the longest active road playoff losing streak in the NBA. The Thunder had swept the Blazers in the regular season, beat them all four. According to Elias, they become the fourth team to lose a playoff series to a team they swept during the regular season. And while it's their third straight one and done since Durant left, it's not all Westbrook's fault. He averaged nearly 42 points per game in four elimination games since KD left. Sixers looking to move on. Up three games to one on Brooklyn, looking to finish off the Nets in Philly on Tuesday. Joel Embiid, uh, talking about the series. Joel, is the series over? Is it over? Three one? Is it over? No. Over. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. I appreciate you, Joel. TMZ's everywhere. Uh, so Embiid thinks it's over. Let's see how he played early in the first quarter. Ben Simmons finds Embiid. And beat shot 9 of 18 from the floor. 76ers lead now 10-0 in the first quarter. Working on Jared Allen. And puts it in over Jared Dudley. And beat scored 10 of the first 14 points for the 76ers. And Ben Simmons, he had 13 in the game. Sixers led by 17 when the first quarter ended. Their largest playoff lead after the first quarter since 2001. I mean, it was just never close. They're up 34-17 here. And beat working on Karis LeVert. Throwing it down to Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Uh, gets called for the technical. Pointing at Hollis Jefferson after he dunks the ball. And then later, J.J. Redick to Embiid. I mean, he's knocking down threes in everything. Led by 29 at the half. Blowout. Embiid 23 and 13. 76ers win it 122 to 100. They clinch it in five games. Sim uh, Simmons and company moving on. I think everybody was kind of on their toes before the game, just making sure we were all locked in. Um, because we didn't want to, you know, have an upset and go back to Brooklyn. So I think everybody did a good job of locking in and uh, doing their job. Tremendous respect for the Sixers organization. It's a hell of a team. Um, they're they're going for big things, and and uh, you know I think they can compete for a championship. Quite honestly, that's what we think. Uh, we think we can win it all. Uh, obviously, it's going to take a lot. 76ers dominated the series inside, outscoring the Nets by 52 points in the paint in the five games. Remember, Embiid didn't play every game. Game five, they had 68 paint points, most by any team in the last five postseasons. Overall, the Sixers averaged 122.4 points this series. That's the most points any team has scored in its first five playoff games in 30 years. Emotional series for both sides. I mean, things got intense. Series featured 12 technical fouls, three flagrant fouls, Six ejections and a suspension. Embiid had two technicals and one flagrant foul all by himself. 